Today we're going to talk about illustration and uh, freelance illustrators. Does anybody know what I mean by what's a freelance illustrator? Oh, this is going to work real well. <laughs> freelance illustrator is, is I get paid to paint pictures. More importantly, I get paid to paint pictures that are putting a visual image to somebody's words. And those words can be an author, if I was a book illustrator. Those words can be an advertisement for an uh, advertising agency. It could be put visual images to thoughts or words, is what my job is. Now, I still paint traditionally. I do everything you see behind me is done by brush in my hand. It's either oil paint or acrylic paint. I do very little computer work. Not that I have anything against computers. You guys all grew up with mouse pads and styluses in your hand. I grew up with a pencil and brush in my hand. So I've yet to really make the transition uh, to computer stuff. Even though I'm relatively young in my field, I'm a dinosaur. The field and the creative field is going more and more digital. Um, I was just watching a video this morning. They have a stylus now. That's literally a screen that you draw on, and as you draw on it, the screen is the screen for the computer. So you don't even have to make the transition of drawing here and seeing it here. It actually, it comes up as you draw. It's pretty amazing, actually. But anyway, more importantly, what I want to talk to you guys about this morning, or this afternoon, is when I was your age, I used to think that, uh, I remember vividly always saying to myself that I'm not an artist. If I was an artist, it shouldn't be this difficult. I would look around the classroom to other people that were you know, better than me or it seemed to come easier to them and I used to always think if I'm calling myself an artist, I shouldn't be struggling with this. I should just be able to do this. And I remember consciously or unconsciously, I made it a lot more difficult to myself than it could have been. That once I just gave myself permission to be an artist and more importantly to be a young artist in training, I was able to learn it more quicker because then it didn't matter. I, it wasn't something I'd either have or didn't have. It was a learnable skill at that time, and if I chose to work at it, I would get better and better at it. And the other thing that I consciously remember all the time telling myself that I wasn't creative, and I make a living as a fantasy illustrator. And you look at some of these paintings, I would hope to think that you would think I am this creative genius or this creative guy. But I remember when I was your age, I consciously used to tell myself that I'm not creative because I didn't think I had an imagination. Because I thought, that as an artist, you had to close your eyes and see the finished picture to the last detail. I mean, you look at some of these paintings, they're pretty involved. I thought I would have to close my eyes, see that dragon, see the teeth, see every single scale, see the landscape, see the fire, see the horse, what's the horse look like, what's the expression on the horse, see the wizard, how long is the wizard's hair? hair? And because I couldn't close my eyes and see that, I didn't think I was creative. Well, at this stage of my career, I must have painted about 1,500 to 2,000 paintings, I'm going to say. I've been doing this professionally for going on 11 years now. I think three times in my life I've had a flash of inspiration where I've seen the completed picture finished in my mind's eye. Besides that, it starts out very, very roughly, very, very loosely. Uh, I was fortunate enough to learn everything by some fellow artists, a guy named Tim and Greg Hildebrandt who taught me this, that taught me that there was a process to putting a picture together. And it starts out sometimes very, very abstractly. It starts out in a thumbnail. We'll talk about that in a second. And each step is designed to clarify the idea and to solidify it. I look at it like I have a big funnel in my head. And somebody just dumped in like 2,000 marbles. And I have to keep shifting it down, shifting it down until I get that one final cohesive whole. So how many people here think they're artists? How many people think they're creative? Okay, how many people think they're not for you? Okay, at least you're honest. All I can say is your creativity is a muscle. Your imagination is a muscle. And like every other muscle in your body, the more you use it, the more you exercise it, the stronger it's going to become. And the second thing I'll tell you is that there's a process to putting a picture together. First of all, it's going to help you visualize something and clarify it into a concrete image. Second of all, it's the professional way to do something. Because when you graduate from here, no one's going to hire you and say, okay, here's a million dollars, give me a painting about me, and I'll see you in a month. That's not the way it works. They're going to want to see it every single step along the way to make sure they get the exact painting that they want. So if you don't get in the habit of doing some of the stuff I'm going to show you now, get in the habit of doing it. 
because it's the professional way of doing it. Okay. This was a job I had done for DC Comics. Um, it was for a card game. It was only going to get reproduced about that big. And my, the first thing I get is I get a call from an art director or something. And he'll have an assignment for me. He'll send it to me via email. Sometimes it's only one or two words. Sometimes it's a shorter version of a book um, that I have to read. Sometimes it's a whole book that I have to read. But I'll get some sort of description. And for this one, he wanted this guy. I forgot the name of the group. There's some type of like in DC's world or like the CIA group or something. And he was the head of the group. And there's this other group called Checkmate, I believe. And he wanted this guy staring at a check piece, checker piece, a king, I believe it was. Uh, so the first thing I do is I sit down and I draw what's called thumbnail sketches. And what a thumbnail sketch is, it's literally only this big. And I'm not trying to draw correctly. I'm trying to think creatively. I'm trying to come up with ideas. And I'm basically just scribbling. I have to apologize because I don't have anything from start to finish. So I have bits and pieces of things here. But here's some of my thumbnails for the whole thing. And you can see, I'm just thinking about movement. I'm thinking about positioning, shapes. I'm just scribbling. I'm not concerned about anatomy. I'm not concerned about proportion. I'm not even concerned about them looking like correct drawings. That's what this step is not for. This step is not for. All I'm trying to do is think creatively. I'm trying to come up with ideas and come up with setups. I'm thinking action, like we did gesture drawings last week. I'm thinking almost if you can see something, if you squint down and saw this room, everything's just kind of a blur. And that's the way I'm thinking about my thumbnail. I'm thinking about action, and I'm thinking about major shapes and some light and shadow. But not in detail. Everything is just suggested. It's the first step to taking an abstract idea and make it into a concrete image. Okay? What I can tell you guys is to do at least five to ten thumbnails. I've done as many as 50 to 60 for some jobs. Some days it comes, some days it don't. We're all visual people, and I always forget what we think with our left side of the brain or the right side of the brain. One side's creative, one side's analytical. Some days you're already going to be there. You're going to be in your creative side, and ideas are just going to come. Other days, maybe you were balancing your checkbook this morning or something, and you're thinking more analytically. You're going to have to work a little harder to make that shift into the creative side. So I would do at least five or ten thumbnails. Things to remember, the first thing you think of is most likely the first thing everybody's going to think of. So the first thing you did, force yourself to do five or ten more. When you land on something you think is a good idea, force yourself to do two or three more. Because you might draw a couple more that are really good ideas, but you have the one that you like to fall back on. Okay. The other thing about thumbnails is, when I've said I've done 50 or 60 of them, I haven't drawn 50 or 60 different ideas. You can have one idea and do 5 or 10 or 20 thumbnails to that idea. Let's say I want to do a picture of Batman on a ledge. Do I want Batman, do I want to be looking up at him? That's one thumbnail. Do I want to be looking down at him? It's still the same idea, but it's a different look. Do I want his body twisted? Do I want a curve? Do I want something in the background? So I'm taking the same idea and I'm expanding on it on each thumbnail. Each thumbnail is very loose, it's very suggestive. I'm taking what I like from that thumbnail, taking it over to the next one, trying to make it better, leaving what I don't want. So again, you're not trying to draw correctly, you're not trying to draw anatomy, you're not trying to draw a proportion, you're just trying to think creatively. You're trying to take that first step of getting an abstract idea down to a concrete image. So the next step after that is I have to gather some reference material. So I had to get an idea of what this guy looked like. And luckily, DC had sent me some stuff. They sent me some images of what this guy looks like. And that sounds basic, but it's amazing how sometimes students don't do it. If I want to paint a horse, I paint, even though I paint fantasy stuff, I paint it semi-realistically. Can you guys close your eyes and see what a horse looks like? You know the shape of the eyes, so you can kind of guess the basic shape of it, but can you see the structure of the nose, the color of the nose, the shape of the eyes, the color of the eyes, you know what the mane looks like, do you know what the horse's hoofs look like, how far up those hoofs come, the color, is the color the same as it is the hair? You know, all these little details you need to know. So the first thing you have to do in order to paint a horse realistically is you've got to get pictures of horses. You have to get references. 
And I know it sounds basic, but it's that simple. If I want to paint a castle, I have to get pictures of a castle. I'm not trying to find the exact castle that I'm going to paint and rip somebody off. I'm not just going to take a picture and repaint it and say it's mine. I'm trying to look at all the distinctions that makes a castle look like a castle or makes a horse look like a horse. I'm trying to fill my creativity with as much information as I can so that when I sit down to draw a horse, it looks like a realistic horse. So again, let's do a little exercise. If I had to draw a wizard standing there with some sort of cauldron and there's a, just a brick wall behind him, a castle wall, we can kind of picture the rocks, right? Or maybe they're just square bricks. And you can probably almost picture the color of the wall, right? But besides that, can anybody else come up with anything more? Right, but if I think about that, it's just a generic, boring wall. And I want my pictures to be a little more exciting. So I have reference books at home. I'm an old school guy. I like to physically feel things. If you guys grew up with the internet, you can just go in and Google castle walls or something like that. But the first thing I'll do is I'll get, on my, get a cup of coffee, sit down with all my reference books on castles, and I would start leafing through my books on castles. Maybe in one castle I found a cool crack. And I marked that page. Maybe a couple more pages later, I find a cool spider web or some type of torch or something, so I would mark that page. You know, maybe in a couple pictures later, I found some kind of windowsill or window ledge or something that's unique to that castle. So now I have a wall that not only has the brick shape and the color shape, but I have some interesting cracks, I have a shadow pattern on it, I have a spider web, I have the torch, I have a, a window ledge. All of a sudden, I have a castle wall that has character to it. So I cannot emphasize enough to educate yourself on what something looks like. That's number one. Number two, if you ever did get an assignment that's got to be exact, like let's say I had to do a Civil War piece or something, I was painting some sort of general or something, that costume has to be exact. You have to research that costume. If I want to paint a samurai warrior, I need to know what a samurai warrior's costume looked like. Because if I don't, I'm going to get a thousand letters from samurai warrior buffs out there that are going to say this costume is not correct. So you need to educate yourself. You need to do the reference and the research. Once I do the research, I draw what's called a rough sketch. And here's a picture of my rough sketch, you can see it over here. This is still out of my head, okay? And I purposefully, I shouldn't say this on film, but I guess I will. I purposefully keep my rough sketches rough. Because all my art director is supposed to do is look at it, he sees the basic setup, I like it, go for it. When I first started starting out, I used to always want people to think, oh, I don't want them to think I can't draw. I'm going to really do a nice tight sketch here. And when I did that, my art director would start to nitpick. Ah, you know, his finger looks too big, his, his arm, his eyes are really too big, I don't really like that expression. That's not what this step is for. He's literally just supposed to look at it, I like it, do it, and that's it. That's the end of the conversation. So now I purposely keep my rough sketches rough so he doesn't go too nuts or she doesn't go too nuts picking on details. Once that rough sketch is approved, I go out and I hire a model. I can fake a figure. I can draw and paint something out of my imagination, but it's going to look somewhat cartoon. Even though I'm doing cartoon characters, I want them to look realistic. So to get the amount of detail I need, or the amount of subtleties I have, the subtleties of flesh and stuff, I have to use some sort of reference material. So after I draw my thumbnail out of my head, I draw my rough sketch out of my head, I hire a model that I pose to the lighting and exactly to my sketch. Okay? Once I do that, I'll shoot an overall shot. I'll shoot shots of any close-ups that I need, hands, anything that I might think is going to get me difficult. Now, I will say this. I used to always use 35 millimeter film. I love cameras. I love to take pictures. I love to feel like I'm taking pictures. Within the last five years, I stitched, switched to digital photography. I have a very high-end SLR. Um, the reason why is twofold. Number one, I used to always have to take a picture of my model, and I would have to zoom in on his head, I would zoom in from his hands, zoom in on his feet, and I would be painting from six or seven different photographs of the model. With my digital camera, it comes in so big and so detailed in my computer, and I can still do blow-ups up, blow of his head and his hands. Even though there are five or six pictures, it's from the same picture. Uh, the other thing that's good about digital photography, we guys get into this, is I can't tell you how many times the only way to take good pictures is to take a lot of bad pictures and to learn from them. I would hire a model, I would have them come in, I would pose them, take my photographs, pay my model, have the model go home, 
you know, break down my lights, drop the film off to the place to get developed, and all of a sudden realize that the model had his hand in front of his face, and there's a big shadow across his face, and the whole shots are useless. Uh, so with the digital photography, you could have the model take a break, you can scroll through them real quick and make sure you got exactly what you need.